TGIF, everyone. Happy Friday. We made it through another week, and we are so glad, as always, to have you here with us live on Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore in Studio B. Courtney Zavala hanging out at home for who knows how long. At least it's nice weather, though. <laughs> At least it's nice weather. And at least we, you know, I've got lots of toilet paper. I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing. Are you thirsty, Derek? Oh, are you thirsty? So Let's just start thirsty. it off right. It's not even Thursday, though. What are we celebrating? But it's, but it's Friday. <laughs> you ready to pour? So tomorrow is National Rosé Day. And our friend, listen to that. It's such a good sound. Our friends over at, uh, <laughs> it's such a great sign. <gasps> um, our friends over at Messina Hoff are helping us celebrate. Cheers to you. Um, so tomorrow is National Rosé Day, and I have the Grenache Dry Rosé. By the way, we should mention Messina Hoff, all locations, Brian, Fredericksburg, and Grapevine, all open. All yeah. open now, people, so you can get your Messina Hoff tasting on. <laughs> well, and if anyone at home is wondering uh, it, <laughs> why one of the bottles is empty, um, it's just because it's empty. Because I, um, let's just say I did my homework last night. I know, Courtney, um, you <laughs> had arranged this special <laughs> delivery, and I thought we were supposed to drink it, so I did. Oh. You know what? This is so fun. I'm just going to tell everybody. So I'm going to tell the viewers. So we were chatting before the show, and I said, Derek, do you have both bottles of your wine? Which one are you opening? He goes, yes, I have both bottles. <laughs> one is full and one's empty. And I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean one's empty? They sent you an empty bottle of wine? I was very confused. No. He said, well, no, I took it home and drank it. <laughs> I thought As I any good journalist would do. That's you, what I you thought tasted, we were You tasted, you went home and did your homework assignment. That's what I thought we were supposed to do. It is delicious. Well, listen. I know. I know. Did you like this? So what's... Uh, 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 this I know, delay this, drives this me delay crazy. This delay is terrible. I'm I sorry. I know. Our Please viewers go. hate it, too. Please so go. I have the so this is a darker rosé, right? The Sophia Marie rosé mm -hmm. and from the Texas High Plains. And it really is beautiful. I, typically, I would go for like a blush pink rosé, like a rosé that's actually not very pink. This is like a very deep pink or almost like a light red. And it's got a great flavor. So check it out. And Courtney, they're and doing something really cool for, uh, for healthcare workers, right? You can essentially send someone a bottle and they'll take care of the shipping? Yeah, what's so cool is our friends over at Messina Hoff have this great program going on right now, and it's called the Bottle of Thanks program. If you buy a bottle of Messina Hoff wine, um, you can also, uh, Messina Hoff will buy a bottle and deliver it to a medical worker, and they are partnering with local hospitals all around. So you could just be part of the, that program. What a fantastic way to say thank you and to send a little happy is what I like to call it, like whenever you get something in, in the mail by surprise or someone hands you something. Um, and what a great time to celebrate, too, the local vineyards that we have going on. Of course, Messina Hoff, a beautiful label um, that we love celebrating here, you know, in Houston, of course. Um, but both of these rosés are readily available. Their label is great. I mean, they have extensive wines that you can choose from, but what a great program to have that bottle of thanks and, and pay it forward and give somebody a little upli uplifting spirit and, and a nice bottle of wine. Yeah, a nice little surprise. So thank you for arranging my little delivery, Courtney, because it is a nice surprise. And a distant cheers to you on this uh, National Rosé Day Eve, right? National Rosé Day Eve, because it's happening That's tomorrow. Right. Well, and what a beautiful That's weekend right. to celebrate, right? The last couple days, it's oh. been so dry outside. This morning, I actually stepped I outside and watered some plants. It was, it was a, I don't know, it, it just feels like we all could use a Friday right now. And I should say, in case you guys are wondering, I, you know, sometimes you get a little eye twitch or something happens to you, like part of your body is twitching. Yeah. So this morning, yeah. I've been having this weird thing where I have like a lip twitch going on. I don't recall this ever happening okay. before, but it's almost like <laughs> the muscle in my lip just keeps contracting. So if you see a little something happening down under, don't be concerned. And by down under, I, just, I mean my face. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to punch Cheers. you today. I, <laughs> it's, 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 it's maybe the wine. If it, so years ago, I worked for this television station, 
And we had we had this reporter who, like, one night during um, during his assignment, he developed Bell's palsy. You know, which is where half of your face um, is, yes. is paralyzed. Oh, right? It's horrible. Typically, it's temporary. Right? There are no like you know. Some people struggle with it for many years. Other people recover from it like very quickly. But this morning, as my lip has been twitching up, I've just been a little bit concerned that I might be on the verge of something. So don't be surprised if anything no. goes wrong during today's show. No, it's okay. I mean, you could be like me right now because I hear someone's ringing my doorbell. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Who's ringing your doorbell? I'm the only one here. Oh. I don't know, but we'll, you know, don't we'll figure know it you're out. Busy, we'll figure busy it out. Hosting a television I mean, show at one I got a show. <laughs> That is so, you know what's and funny? it's now been rung twice, so I don't know. I, sometimes I get calls, like, during the <laughs> 1 o'clock hour on my phone, right? And lately, it's like, my dentist calls yeah. all the time at, like, 1.02. Uh, all the time, um, all the time. I call him back, hey, sorry, I, I was tied up for a while. You know, people mean well. They, they, <laughs> they, they I know. <laughs> well, you know, they don't really, I know. It's like, what do you say? I mean, uh, sorry, I couldn't grab the phone. I was on TV. Sorry. Yeah. Although yeah, or, you have, or, or remember, the telemarketers. I, mean, I think those phone <laughs> calls are the best. <laughs> the <gasps> telemarketers, when they call I during know. the show, sorry, on TV, can't talk. I'll, yes, I'll buy all of them. Bye. Bye. Right. Just you know what right I think over. is really interesting now? This is something that's new that just started popping up for me. And maybe, maybe I'm late to the game or maybe I just hadn't noticed before. Do you notice on your phone in, in a number that it doesn't recognize or something like that, it now says potential, potential spam? Potential spam. Yes, it does. Hi, and that oddly, must be something new. Well, I, maybe, but for some reason, every time you call me, it says potential spam. So I'm not sure what's up. <laughs> That's mean. Sorry, not it interested. It does not oh, say potential oh, spam. <laughs> <laughs> not buying. Oh, not buying. <laughs> I'm not buying whatever you're No wonder you're you never answer my calls. <laughs> you haven't answered my calls since the 90s. Oh, I know. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible with the... D don't call me, text me, and even then I'm not going to write you back. So just say... Just well, you don't answer text. the text either. I know. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy like with other... You know, with the people in front of me in my life. And by the people in front of me in my life, I mean only Brandon because it's just us. It's just us. My gosh, by the way, it is a little I bit know. alarming to see our numbers, not just numbers of COVID going up, but hospitalizations in Harris County and yesterday oh. of course uh, Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo gave her press conference and oh my gosh folks it just makes me feel like we all need to sort of pump the brakes right for a little while I'm still still wearing my mask all through the building and anytime I go to the grocery store but uh, I don't know yes can can I just tell you something yesterday yeah. I had um, I had an errand to run and I have to tell you I was the minority in the person wearing the mask really why are people not wearing their masks anymore if we're I am store, freaking out again. Like, yeah. I'm back to freaking out. We for sure wear them, like, at a store. We did go. I told you how, like, we ventured out to a restaurant last weekend, and we felt strange not wearing a mask at the restaurant. But if you're eating, right, how right. do you navigate the scenario? Do you skip it? Do you continue just doing the takeout on the curbside? It was nice having just, right. you know, our own little space with nobody around us. But, um, yeah, when it comes to a place like a grocery store or someplace where there are a lot of areas that people are touching... A yeah. high touch area. Isn't it funny all these new things we've learned to say? High touch areas, social distancing, entry points. Um, you know, and, and also, you know, like the six feet. Um, <laughs> that's what they're called entry points okay. for viruses. Oh. Um, but I had someone actually like get in my personal space yesterday, like oblivious to the fact of like social distancing. Regardless of the fact that there's those markers on the ground, I you know, know, stand six feet apart, they're like red and blue. I mean, they're they're bright, they're they're there. They've been there for a while, and like she came right up on me. <laughs> that's I mean, that's just the to thing. get by. So I mean, there the, was nobody else on either side of yeah. me. But, but some people just maybe have this lack of awareness, right? And even though so many establishments are constantly cleaning and sanitizing, what you can't clean and sanitize against is someone who it just fails to realize or acknowledge what's going on and they get up in your business. You know, so you're still, still mean, dealing, dealing with other people who like cough openly yeah. and sneeze without, you know, sneeze into the elbow, not into the hands, people. Elbow. Yeah.
I know. And and I also, so I'm one of these people, if I go outside, AJ is too, um, I sneeze in the sunlight, you know, if you're just stepping outside or something oh, like that. So sneeze. even with my mask on, it does, yeah. And AJ's the same way. He sneezes three times every time. I mean, it's so crazy. But even with a mask on, I'm still kind of trying to, like, not sneeze because I don't want anybody to think, like, I'm the one, you know, I'm sick or, you know, earlier a couple months ago I had a really bad allergy. It was a bad time to have a cough, you yeah. know? And you're just kind of... <laughs> You're like you're trying not to cough, but then that's making it worse. And you want to hold up a sign that says like it's just sunlight sneezing. I, I don't know. <laughs> Even though I have a mask on, there's lots of things. One I of our know. friends was telling us the other day he was out running an errand at some store somewhere, and he saw someone pull their mask down, sneeze, and and put it back on. So I don't know. There are all kinds of interesting. What? Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> But I guess if you sneeze Understand. into the mask and then you're, I don't know, it's a whole new way of just being out into the world and navigating. Hey, you know, what we've got to talk about uh, today, Courtney, is the fact that June 12th, today is Loving Day, and it's all about celebrating interracial marriage and looking back on a time when not so many decades ago, the Supreme Court essentially overturned these state laws. It was, I think it was illeg illegal in maybe 16 states, and these states had written into mm -hmm. their state constitutions that interracial marriage was not allowed, and in many cases, a felony. And so there's a husband and wife team, Mildred and Richard Loving, which is why we call today Loving Day, and their case is the one that went to the Supreme Court. But, oh my goodness, I was reading, reading up on this a little bit this morning, and oh yeah. wow. I mean, it's just the quotes from some of the people involved back in the time. One of the judges said something like, well, God put uh, all these different colors on different continents for a reason. You know, like you had black and you had white. God put all these different, you know, colored people on yeah. different continents because his intention was that nobody should mix. And I just thought, oh, my Lanta, we, this, is, this was not that long ago that yeah. things like that were being said by, you know, people in positions of power. Right. I mean, 1967, you're right. When I uh, was reading on this, reading up on this this morning, um, it, it gave me chills. And I actually had to go back to look at the year because I was shocked. Yeah. Um, and, and not, like not really, but I really this? was. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Right. Only 1967. And when you look at the picture, there's a picture posted on um, on our website of Richard and Mildred and that beautiful photo, black and white photo of them, an old photo. And I don't know, it just, it, you just, your, your brain just starts occupying all these other images and things that they saw and had to go through because they were in love and wanted yeah. to be a couple and have a family. And mm -hmm. I mean, at 1967, it's really remarkable. Yeah. Well, and for people who maybe who have not heard this story, so they had to cross state lines from Virginia. I think they went to D.C. to get married and then they went back to Virginia just to live their lives. Right. They were starting a family, pregnant with kids. And in the middle of the night, authorities came and arrested them and threw them in jail and essentially said, you're breaking state mm -hmm. law. So you have two choices. You can either stay in jail or leave the state for 25 years clearly they chose to leave the state um, but during that time though even in places where states did not have a discriminatory law on the books saying that interracial uh, marriages were considered a felony it's still uh, laws are not I mean interracial couples were horribly harassed and ostracized and had major issues in their in their communities in every single state in the United States. I remember yes. my mom telling me a story. My mom worked in New York City in the 70s and she she always told me the story growing up that she was walking down the street one day with one of her associates, I think someone she worked with, and all of a sudden the associate, this guy, this white guy she was with, was losing his mind and com and so angry, like livid, because an interracial couple, a white woman and a black man, had passed them walking down the sidewalk arm in arm. So it, it's just amazing. This was in the 70s, right? Which, I mean, many of us grew yeah. up in the 70s, yeah. right? Not so long ago. Feels like yesterday. And I remember... As a kid, when my mom told me the story, I remember thinking, 
again, like the question you just asked, wait, how long ago was this? And someone right, really right. thought those things. And Courtney, something that you and I, we've talked about on the show, we've talked about on the phone, all of this stuff happening right now with Black Lives Matter and these people who are, you know, mm -hmm. piping up and saying these horrible things. This woman attacked me last week on Facebook saying, how dare, you know, all lives matter and white lives matter and how dare um, me say anything about that. And what I always think about is this judge who said, well, God created people on separate planets so they don't come together. We look back on these historical quotes and we just think, oh my gosh, what were we thinking? How could we possibly be that, that ignorant and hateful, right? And it's interesting to watch history right. play out given what's happening right now in America with all these people who mm -hmm. are still arguing about race. And those quotes today that I read on Facebook, I think, holy cow, one day, quotes like these are going to be discussed by children and grandchildren in classrooms. Yes. And we're all going to look back and say, wow, what were we thinking? Right, exactly, exactly. And by the way, if you haven't seen uh, the 2016 movie, Loving, yeah. it is phenomenal. Uh, Derek, I don't know if you saw it, but it is so good. It's heart-wrenching, and it's it's one of those movies that you, again, have to sit back and think, this really happened. This is a true story. This is someone's story. Uh, it was it was amazing. There's many, many moments in there that I just was, like, bawling my eyes out. It's such a great film. Yeah, in fact, Ray, our stage manager, and I were just chatting about this film before before we went live. It was your friend who directed it, Ray? A co yes. college buddy? Who directed oh. the film. So, interesting connection oh here my to gosh, our channel no 2 idea. family. But yeah, yeah I, uh, I think maybe this weekend we'll, we'll stay at home and watch that. And uh, you know what they say, truth is stranger than fiction sometimes, so. Absolutely, And Absolutely. speaking of things to watch, so have you heard of the show, Courtney, called The Vast of Night? We tried to run this story last week and then we were preempted with some breaking news. But today, Lauren Kelly is gonna catch up with two actors from this brand new sci-fi movie available now on Amazon Prime, Sierra McCormick and Jake Horowitz from the Vast of Night movie, and the movie was filmed right here in Texas. Very cool. Also coming up, cheers to the weekend, y'all. Whether you're planning a virtual happy hour or a date night for two, we've got you covered. We have three ingredient cocktail recipes coming up. Plus, what do you do if you don't have fancy bar tools? You don't worry, because you don't need them. We're going to share alternatives you have lying around that work just as well. And after the break, from her commitment to rescue dogs to her love of running, we're going to get to know the newest member of our KPRC Channel 2 family, morning anchor Lisa Hernandez. That's What's next? Well, welcome back. You know, you may have seen a familiar face back on Houston Airwaves this month. Lisa Hernandez has joined the KPRC2 family. And we are so excited about this. After taking a little break to spend some quality time mm -hmm. with her family, she's returned to the mm -hmm. anchor desk where she belongs. As part of the KPRC Channel 2 News Today team, she's joining us now from Studio A. Lisa. Ooh. It's so great to see oh my you. Gosh. No. <laughs> so excited. It's surreal to be here. I have watched you guys forever. Courtney, I love you. And um, I love you both. Aww. But yeah, it's just, I mean, right after I had the second baby, I was home with her and just exhausted. And you know how that goes when you have a newborn, but just watching you and laughing with you. So you got me through all that time. Oh, that is so, so Aww. sweet. And did it feel like for you, because I know you've been in Houston for a while, uh, did it feel sort of like you're were, you were coming? home and you're back on TV because I, I got to tell you the first day you started and you were on the air it just seemed like a very natural fit no I yes it was awesome to be able to come back on air um, deciding to walk away from another station right before I had uh, our second baby was a huge 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 decision and I thought you know I didn't take time at all with Taylor our firstborn so I thought we're gonna you know we're blessed to be able to have this time to take with Madison Maddie uh, our second baby girl so yeah, I did it. Walked away. Not, you know, you never know. You know, you guys know the news industry. You don't know if you're going to find something else. And um, I, by the grace of God, this job kind of just um, fell in my lap. And I'm so grateful to Graham Media and Jerry Martin. And this is pictures of my crazy family Aww. you're looking at right now. That's my four year old Aww. Taylor. That was right before I had Madison. Look at that bloated face. But um, that was like that was like 34 weeks. You look um, great. But you know, it's I was so blessed and so excited to be here. So. I'm just over the moon, you guys. 
Well, we are so glad to have you part of the family. And Lisa, I'm a big fan, watched you for years as well. And we, of course, have seen each other out at different events. And I have to hand it to you because I know what it feels like as a working mom to make a decision to walk away yeah. and be home with your family, especially having a baby, um, you know, mixing all of that right in. Um, and, and the dedication to your craft and, and wanting to come back and, and making it uh, a comeback for the right reasons. And that's what I think is so fantastic yeah. um, and and hats off to you is like working mama to working mama I mean like it, it, things have to be right in that scenario and I can tell that this is a perfect fit perfect fit I mean it's just the morning hours are ideal for me um, my last station you know the roles were changing I was getting moved to weekends and I for my family's sake I couldn't handle a weekend assignment because I would never see them and I would have this you know new baby at home and so it's just such an awesome opportunity to be able to have a morning chair and I just, I mean, 1 a.m. alarm clock, I'll take it, baby, I'll take it. I just feel so fortunate to have the job. <laughs> so, but yeah, Courtney, thank you. I know working mama to working mama, you have the mom guilt, right? You take time off and then you go, okay, I'm yeah. gonna get back in because it's an opportunity and I'm gonna go with it. It's a blessing, but it, the balance, it's hard to strike. It's hard to strike and I still have some mom guilt, but uh, the whole family's excited for me, so. Okay, so 1 a.m. though, the, the yeah. alarm goes off at 1 a.m. Can you just describe to us um, just what the home life scenario is like? <laughs> because I, between the husband and your, your two children, your young is very young. Very young. Um, how does that all work behind the scenes? We're a crazy house. Um, we're all nut jobs. <laughs> we have uh, four rescue dogs and two fosters right now. Oh. Six dogs right now in my house, you guys. <laughs> crazy! And I vacuum constantly. Here's four of our babies. Oh. I mean, it's just all Houston rescues. Um, but no, so the, the dogs and the, the seven-month-old Maddie, that was a, uh, these are, oh, there's Luna. Oh. Um, I know. I'm just crazy for dogs and, and Houston. Oh, and there's Ted who I had to take a picture with on day one here. But no, yeah, the alarm goes off at one. The dogs get up with me. They've all got to go outside and do their business. And I'm then yelling, corralling them from the yard to come in so I can hop in the shower and then get out the door and get to the studio. Um, and then my husband, Joel, God bless him, is, is you know, Mr. Mom. Uh, oh, there we are on our wedding day, seven Beautiful. years ago. Um, yeah, he gets the baby up and he gets Taylor up and he has to get everybody out to the door and they're in daycare now. and. It's just, you know, we make it work. In, the, in, in the midst of the pandemic, right. I still have the mom guilt because now my babies are in daycare and we don't know how safe any of that is and we don't know how safe it is for us to really go back to work and the masks and all of that. So there's a lot. The hamster wheel is going 24 seven in my life. Um, well, it you know what I like to say too is busy people get it done and I know the mom guilt will never leave but girl you're doing a great job the <laughs> the you. the family unit it's a partnership you know yes. I mean like everybody's pulling their weight as much as they can right. um, let's talk about a little bit more things that you love okay. um, like me you're a runner but how did you weren't always a runner were you no no I was extremely overweight as a child i have to i mean i was the fat baby the fat toddler look at look at this face oh, oh my goodness this is kindergarten oh. and um i was actually back in the day um our nurses at school like the school nurse would weigh everybody i don't think they do that anymore i hope they don't oh. but they would put the weight on the like on the wall and i was always the heaviest weight right after jessica and Naya, but she was like really tall so she had an excuse to be <laughs> to be heavier but i'm such a short thing so anyway I did it's like scarred me for life but uh, when I was 12 I was just so sick of being bullied because I was like 30 pounds heavy and my doctor was telling my parents look she's gonna be she's pre-diabetic you guys have hypertension that runs in the family type 2 diabetes so and the whole family rallied and we got up and started walking together and uh, I have a rail thin brother my parents are always very fit it was just me I just have DNA that I'm a chunkier girl you know what I mean so we would get up as a family run walk I you know my mom and I started running together and then that turned into running every day and then I did my first 10k when I was 13 and my first half marathon at 15 and then my first marathon at 20 and now I've done seven marathons and three Boston's and wow. so it just I I mean, I, Unbelievable. the beginning was kind of rough, but you know, you get healthy for the right reasons. There's my hubby, Joel, and um, mm -hmm. me with the dogs, sweaty and gross. But yes, I love to run and I love to eat and I still ha you know, have the tendency to put on pounds pretty easy. So I gotta, I gotta keep it going. It's been <laughs> tricky during COVID. Yes. Uh, I hate that our time always goes by I so know, quickly. Let's quickly chat about your career though, because you started in Charlotte, then you worked as a reporter and anchor in LA. I used to watch you on TV. 
in L.A., Lisa. <laughs> ABC7. Weekend mornings, well. baby, 5 a.m. You were one of like 10 people <laughs> watching. God bless you. And then in 2011, <laughs> you, there were a lot of people watching. You're just being modest. In 2011, you came to Houston and started your career here. I did. I had a main anchor offer in Houston. I didn't know a soul, you guys. My mom's family's from El Paso, but I didn't know anyone from Southeast Texas. And I got a my agent got a call, and they were interested in auditioning me um, at 11 for the main anchor gig, and then came here for that, and then was at 11 for eight years. So I'm grateful to them. I had a great start there, and you know, we evolve, and we. You know, I, I was able to get picked up at Channel Two, and I, I just feel so blessed, so so blessed to be here and uh, continue on in Houston, where we plan to stay and raise the family and probably collect more dogs along the way. Don't tell my <laughs> HOA. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to think that that's that's more that's a, more dogs in the future. Right. By the way, you um, you say your cooking skills are no good. Real quickly, do you guys do a lot of takeout then, we or is your hubby the cook? We do. Uh, he does better okay. than I do. <laughs> I am plant based. He's a meat eater. So we're just kind of all uh, just this, uh, a mix of whatever. And um, you get in where you fit in. <laughs> my family, like you want to cook for me, great. I don't want any, you know, no chicken for me. Whatever. Yeah, we're just we're kind of nuts right. right now. We're in that stage, so we just make it work somehow, Courtney. I tell you. <laughs> You're making Absolutely. it work. Yeah. Well, Lisa, listen, I know it is uh, just about your bedtime. It is. So we'll let Thank you go you. and <laughs> nap so you can repeat the cycle. Oh, tomorrow's Saturday. That's some good news. It is Saturday. Yes. Nice surprise, right? Thank you so much for your time. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, welcome to Channel 2. <laughs> Thank you. Love Great you guys. to see Thanks you. so much. All and right. a reminder to our viewers, you can catch Lisa on Channel 2 News today, Monday through Friday, starting at 4.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. right here on KPRC Channel 2. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. This is our favorite time when we get to highlight our Studio 1H Artist of the Day. And today goes to rising fifth grader Kira for this fun painting. I love this. She actually used paint here on this. And um, it's fantastic because it's a great color palette. Kind of reminds me of waves. But you know me. I love anything with shimmer and pink. Yeah, that is that's very true. This one's perfect. Kira, great job. And I love how each one of the artists, they've all had such completely different styles, Courtney. You've got loads of talent. Yeah. I know we're showcasing loads of talent. Thank you so much, Kira, for this piece today on the wall of Studio 1H. All right, we're going to shift gears now back to the weekend. And how about this? Some boozy cocktails. Sound good to you, Courtney? Always. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, these cocktails are simple enough to make from home using just three ingredients, and you don't need any fancy bar tools. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the show. Whether you are planning a virtual happy hour or just a date night for two this weekend, we've got you covered with just three ingredient cocktails you can mix up right at home. Yeah, and you don't even need a date. You could do this by yourself, folks. There's no, no. shame in that. Brand ambassador for <laughs> U.S. Sailor Jerry, Ashley Thomas, helps us raise a glass with two simple recipes. Welcome to the bunker. Tonight, I'm going to be making two cocktails from things I think you may have laying around your house. First drink, one of my favorites from a movie I love that you might have seen about a dude with a rug and a beverage. Great movie. It's called The White Russian. Now I know, I know, it's normally made with vodka. Tonight, we're gonna be making it with Sailor Jerry Spice Rum because it's what I have in my house and it's delicious. Now, measuring. Can't start without talking about measuring. Do you have a jigger in your house? If not, I have some tips for some things you may have lying around that'll help get you the right measurement. Why is it important to measure when you're making a cocktail? Because you need to be responsible and you need to be consistent. This way, all your drinks taste the same and taste delicious every time. Now, do you have a party cup laying around the house? If you do, this bottom line right here, the very first little notch, happens to be one ounce. Great way to remember. And also, if you don't have a party cup because you already partied them all out, but you are making bread, you probably have some measuring spoons. One ounce is also two tablespoons. So it's very simple to get a well-portioned, properly measured cocktail in your bunker. So let's make this drink already, right? Super great measurements, two, one, one. Easy to remember, starting with two parts of Sailor Jerry Spice Rum. Delicious drink. You don't even need to shake this one. It's very easy. One part coffee liqueur. 
There are many types on the market. You can grab whichever one you have around your bunker, whichever one you prefer. We're gonna use one part. So that was two parts of Sailor Jerry and one part of coffee liqueur. Now, a very important ingredient, right? The milk. I happen to have almond in my house. You can use whichever kind you like. And just like when you order a coffee, when you're out and about, when we're not hunkered in our bunkers, it just depends on how much milk you want to float. I use the spoon to float on top. If you don't have a fancy cocktail spoon, you can use any spoon that you have in your kitchen bunker and just float on top with the spoon upside down how much you would like on your drink. I like just enough so it starts to look cool in the glass. Because let's be honest, part of drinking is having a cocktail that looks pretty cool. So, are you feeling fancy? I know I do, and you should too when you drink a bunker tea. Super easy drink, take you from day to night. Same measurements, two, one, one. Two parts Sailor Jerry Spice Rum, one part coffee liqueur, but now it's one part strong coffee. If you have an espresso maker, awesome. Use that. Shake it, stir it, whatever you wanna do, put it in a fancy glass, and you have yourself a buck routine. I mean, all of those are pretty amazing, very easy to make. I think I can even handle that, right? <laughs> so good. Yeah, they looked great. I know. Check, make sure to check out our website for the recipes. And coming up next on Houston Life, our financial expert has been staying on top of the latest stock market news. We've got an update right after this. coronavirus outbreak rattled the stock market for months and is still showing signs of uncertainty. Certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba, has more on this now. Trevor, welcome to the show. And my goodness, earlier this week, I felt like we had just sort of bounced back and recovered. We, we looked at these numbers, we saw the climb, and then yesterday it had the biggest single day drop since, since the coronavirus drama began. So what's up, dude? What do we make of this? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. In, in fact, uh, I was so excited to come on and tell everyone that basically we were back to where we started January 1st. And then, like you said, yesterday, the market was down substantially, 6%, almost 2,000 points on the Dow. But still, we've come back a lot. And so the thing I just want to highlight is to give you a little bit of perspective is February 12th, the Dow is at 29,500. We're bouncing along. Everything's great. And then literally 35 days later, we're at 18,000 on the Dow, which is about a 35% pullback, quickest correct correction ever. And so look, we, we are certainly not near 18,000 anymore, but it's gonna be volatile still getting through the rest of this. Okay, so what do we take away from this, Trevor? What can we learn from this? Because you've always told us, don't be emotional. There's no one has a crystal ball. There's no such thing as timing the market. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so if you didn't believe me over the last two or three years about timing the market, you've got to believe me now because the market has been so volatile, so quick, no one could have predicted or timed it. Uh, this is the best example to go 35 days and to be down 35% and then to come back, um, not all the way, but close to it in the next two or three months just shows you the uh, the difficulty in timing the market. You've got to get two things right, not just when to get out, but when to get back in. So again, yeah, you don't have a crystal ball. That is not a coherent long-term investment strategy. Have a plan, think long-term. Yeah, nobody's psychic, right? Allegedly. Okay, let's say <laughs> let's say for, for a lot of folks who, who maybe are not actively looking at the stock market or actively day trading or investing, let's just say people have a retirement account, you know, they're, they're worried about their, their retirement, their savings and their 401ks. What should someone do watching what's been happening with the market? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you need to have a plan and you need to have an appropriate allocation, which means your mix. Uh, based on your risk tolerance, equities or stocks to bonds. And then you need to, to, to have confidence in that and think about this long term. Now, a lot of people there uh, unfortunately panicked and did get out of the market altogether. Understandably, I get it based on emotion. But my advice here is, is don't just wait thinking there's going to be another pullback. At some point, you've got to get back in. That was a mistake. No problem. Look forward. Let's figure out 
how to get that cash back in, maybe dollar cost average or getting a certain amount every month. But remember, to really see growth, you got to be invested. You can't just sit in cash. And as we talked about, interest rates are so low right now, effectively, you're losing money sitting in cash. Okay, got it. So just to underscore what you just said, for a lot of people over the past few months who maybe panicked, they took money out of their investment accounts or retirement accounts, you're saying now just don't just sit on that cash. Find a way to get it back into the market with a strategy. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, what I found is a lot of times you'll get out and then you'll just keep waiting as the market recovers. And then you're in no man's land, just sitting in cash. And now the market's fully recovered back to where it is. You've got to get uh, invested and remember what your long term objective is here, which is a good return based on your risk tolerance to achieve your long term financial goals. Yeah, and now is the time, as you've mentioned on the show before, that really good investors see volatility in the market as an opportunity to make even more money long term. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, looking at yesterday, it wasn't a great day, but if you are still waiting and you've been in cash, that might be a good opportunity now to get back, get back to that preferred allocation. Uh, put that behind you and stay focused on those long-term financial goals. Trevor, let's talk, though, about the rest of the year because, again, earlier this week, we saw the stock market doing so well, right? And it seems like investors had more confidence. Then, with all of this talk of maybe a second wave of coronavirus hitting our cities, it seemed like the market fall, that big drop we saw a couple days ago, it seemed to sort of coincide with the COVID fears. So, with COVID, maybe be coming back for a second round according to the medical experts and also the fact that this is an election year which typically brings volatility to the market what if people are just just worried about investing in the market right now well i think i think those are all valid points Derek. look um when it when it comes to the market anytime there's uncertainty the market hates that the most and you're going to see a negative reaction we certainly saw that yesterday and yes, it's still an election year, four or five months, who knows what's gonna happen. But the bottom line is that there will always be reasons not to invest or there'll be something else to worry about. Remember, no one ever got wealthy. This is the Buffett quote. No one ever got wealthy betting against America. So while we're not perfect, and yes, it's going to be volatile, and yes, it's an election year, stay focused on what's important, which is investing in great companies, that are uh, gonna, gonna grow over time, adapt and evolve, and hopefully increase their earnings and profits. And that is gonna pay off for you long-term when you're focused on retirement and some of these other long-term financial objectives. And Trevor, we're out of time, but before I let you go, one last question. You have always talked about the importance of having a nest egg, right? Typically, we talk about having maybe three to six months in savings, but considering what we've seen over the past few months, so many people out of work who are living paycheck to paycheck, do you have any updated advice about how much money we should have in our savings accounts? Yeah, no, I think that rule still applies, but again, if you didn't uh, recognize that or, or here to having a cushion please adhere to that moving forward there's just there's going to be recessions we're going to have pullbacks and that's what that's for thankfully we've been uh, helped through the government through you know stimulus and unemployment and all those things remember that is a fantastic uh, thing that we have here a lot of countries don't have that so um, absolutely take that seriously if you don't have that three to six months start building towards it and you know if it makes you feel more comfortable or confident then go towards a year but but it, but it is critical the cash reserve is critical trevor shakiba thank you so much for your advice it is great to see you as always if you would like to connect with trevor you can visit shakibacapital.com all right turning now to the weekend if you are a sci-fi fan there's a new movie out with ties to texas lauren kelly chats with two stars from the vast of night next Amazon Studios has a new sci-fi mystery film called The Vast of Night, and it's available right now on Prime Video. Set in the 1950s, the film follows two teenagers as they discover something strange in the sky that could change their small town forever. Here's Lauren Kelly. Everett, it's Faye. I'm a sound came through the board and interrupted your radio show. What sound?
We've got two stars of the movie with us today, Sierra McCormick, who plays Faye, and Mr. Jake Horowitz, who plays DJ Everett. Hey, guys! Hey, Hello. how are you? Right off the bat, the movie is out today, The Vast of Night, on Amazon Prime Video. Why don't you guys give everybody a little bit of a synopsis of what it's about? Um, okay, so The Vast of Night takes place on the, the first night of a high school basketball season in a small town in New Mexico, and everyone in the town has gone to the game. And you meet the local DJ, Everett, and his uh, younger friend, Faye. Uh, and they are learning how to use, or Everett is teaching Faye how to use a recorder. And Everett then goes to his radio show, and Faye goes to her job at the switchboard, and then... Oh, well then, <laughs> Faye hears a very strange sound come over the airways of her switchboard, and so she loops Everett in to try to find out what it is, and it sort of sets them off on this adventure over the course of one very vast night to, uh, <laughs> to find out the origin of the sound and what it might be and what that might mean. They've come here before. They've liked this place. They always have. What was really cool is the movie's set in the 1950s, and and the recording equipment is so different. Did you have to learn that technology from back in the day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think me and Sierra both had some te technology research to do, and we were lucky. I mean, I had a... Uh, I had a reel-to-reel -reel recorder in my hotel room while we were shooting, so I could just sort of wake up and like learn my lines and sort of do whatever it would do in his day-to-day -day life and get a real feel for that. Yeah, that was like a huge part of the process for me because Faye has her switchboard, and I don't know, I just thought that was a huge, you know, integral like part of crafting her character just because that's something that is really important to her. I don't know if people realize the movie is set in New Mexico, but it was shot in Whitney, Texas. And even us being from Texas, we're like, um, where's Whitney, Texas? It's a very <laughs> small <laughs> town. Like, of how many people? How many people would you say live in Whitney, Texas? Uh, 500? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I would agree, really small. Um, and we got to meet, like, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> we got to meet almost everyone in town at some point. <laughs> they it probably was... all invited you over for dinner or some pie or dessert or something. Yeah, we had, no, some, we we had, had a barbecue. barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. What's the biggest difference in shooting a movie in a small town like that versus a soundstage in Los Angeles or New York and, and you have all of these other things there. Is it less distracting in a smaller town? I think it's more immersive. I think that like helped me in a way because, you know, when Jake and I are both big city like people. And so, I don't know, there's like a certain shorthand that people in small towns kind of speak with each other and there's just a different sort of way of interacting and speaking, I think, than, you know, people from big cities. I think I'm always so fast, fast, fast. And, you know, when I went to Texas, I think it's also it has to do with, you know, the Texas draw. My mom's from Texas. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think also being in a small town where, you know, I guess just less stress, like less just stuff. Um, a lot of the, you know, when we, Jake and I would like talk to a lot of the people, they had this very, just very relaxed, sort of calm, unrushed way of speaking. And so I thought that, you know, that was really interesting. And like I said, I think it helped me in a way to be able to sort of observe, you know, and, and sort of immerse ourselves in, you know, this very small town, kind of like what, you know, Cayuga might be sort of like. Jake, really something cool or not cool? I was in radio for 20 years before I came over to Houston Life just recently. And the biggest question and request I ever got was, hey, do your radio voice. Did you have to do like a radio voice ever on the set as Everett? Um, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I probably did that just, yeah, to like, for, for Joseph. But there is that part in the movie where Sierra like, or, or if Faye calls Everett out, he's like, why are you talking like that? It sounds so yeah. stupid. <laughs> Come on, give, yeah. us a little, give us a little bit of it right now. Hey, everybody. Yeah, well, I, I think Everett tries to be like smoother than he is. He's like, his radio voice is like, you're listening to cool sound. <laughs> That's legit what we would make fun of, and I feel bad saying it, but I can because I was there. <laughs> That's right. You earned the right. Well, you guys, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. The movie is wonderful. Good thing it's out on a weekend, Friday night. Amazon Prime Video, The Vast of Night, Jake Horowitz plays DJ Everett. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
and you would be McCormick. you would be better than me. That was a <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sarah McCormick plays Faye. You're a operator, and you you guys do such a, a wonderful job. I think that everybody should go and watch it this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks, Lauren. That's my radio voice. <laughs> we do have a link to learn more about the vast of night on our website. Of course, that's HoustonLife.tv. Derek, your radio voice, what's it sound like? Yeah, you sort of sounded like the movie phone guy. Welcome to movie phone. Houston Life will be right Welcome. back. Welcome. Ridiculous. <laughs> Well, that was a fun show today, Courtney. Well, Cheers. I know. Cheers, friend. Are you still enjoying your Messina Hoff? I hope. Is the second bottle empty? <laughs> no, but there's about uh, half a glass left. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, tomorrow is National Rosé Day, and thanks to our friends at Messina Hoff, and don't forget about their bottle program that gifts uh, emergency workers and uh, frontline workers a bottle of wine from them. So have a great weekend. TGIF, Enjoy everyone. This